today we're going to be talking about uh, the world revamp. So welcome in everybody. Thanks so much for checking out this video. We're going to be talking about WoW 11.0. This will coincide, I believe, sometime after Final Fantasy 14 7.0. If you guys enjoy these highlights, yes. these videos, and more, uh, note that you can smash that like button, comment, share, and uh, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we do these live shows uh, generally uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but Chris is going to go celebrate with his wife. Uh, so we will have a kind of a little content gap over here on YouTube for you guys for just a little bit. So beyond that, uh, Chris, you sent me this video. I, uh, I've been listening to it. I, I actually listened to it twice. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed it. And honestly, there was a part of me, like as a non-WoW guy, that I was like, that is interesting. We've long been questioning, how do these long persistent games continue to evolve? And we also have talked about Final Fantasy XIV's strength and weakness in its narrative and its story-driven approach, because that just continues to put content up a tower and ultimately making it very difficult to invite people into the, the very tip top of the tower. Yoshi P has talked about how difficult it would be to go in and rework those things, rework those assets. But they're also seemingly doing that uh, uh, in the Final Fantasy XIV world. But why don't you give a rundown of what Bellular has discovered and why he's excited for the future of WoW as it as it enters in. This would be around the time of its 20th anniversary, which I think is pretty daggum significant. What do you think? So um, WoW is in Shadowlands right now. For anybody that doesn't know the number on that, uh, that is 9.0. And then we are going into 10.0 with Dragonflight. Uh, I believe the predicted date is in November of 2022. Uh, so this is already looking out two years past the expansion that has not yet released as of right now. Um, so you're, you're kicking it out a ways. Uh, a fair bit of what he's analyzing is the time skip uh, element to the narrative that Dragonflight implies so that we can... Uh, Kind of start distancing ourselves and start allowing characters to mature and grow and uh, it's not a massive time skip but uh starting to kick it out a little bit of a distance because uh azeroth has been hit back to back to back to back and so it's been very hard to kind of distance yourself from anything where maybe the writing or the place we went or the enemy we went you want to do something different with um and the, so the wow timeline has been very very dense and so as you start to say okay let's start distancing ourselves from that Maybe it's time for a change in the way we handle the writing. Maybe it's a time for a change when we handle the way the characters. Um, you know, I, I don't think Anduin's in charge of the Alliance right now because he's he's kind of AWOL uh, and he'll show up when he wants to show up. And so I think you have a chance to start saying, if there are people that um, are not around, if you have leadership, and this is something that is important as we look at like, where is Guild Wars 2 headed from here? Where is Final Fantasy 14 headed from here? Mm -hmm. um, because like, that's why I wanted to talk about this as a topic, because it's not just World of Warcraft. We're going to get to a point where you have to decide how do we keep a game not feeling like we're just stretching it out, you know, forever. You've, you've watched those TV shows that have stayed, they've stayed one, one season too long. Mm -hmm. And that's because they didn't have an exit strategy. Um, and they either needed to end earlier or they needed to have a pivot. Uh, and the pivot narratively is the foundation of what allows us to make pivots mechanically. Uh, and so as we look at games that are starting to get to the point where it's time for maybe an engine upgrade, uh, some some graphical updates. No, graphics are not the be all end all, but they are part of of game design. Um, when we look at updating mechanics, updating things that are starting to feel like that's not a good reason anymore. Like, why can't my inventory be bigger? Why is my cosmetic system clumsy? You know, what's going on with monetization in this game? They're just behind because they were operating on best practices, you know, 10 or more years ago. Um, and I think this opens the door for WoW to say it's a different WoW. Uh, and in my mind, that's a get back to basics type thing. Uh, get back to fundamentals. We've continued moving the goal goalposts so many times that we can't even see the stadium anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this is a chance to just say, okay, new stadium. <laughs> Let's get back to what made World of Warcraft World of Warcraft. And that's a heavy emphasis on the world of Warcraft. And maybe in this day and age, that is better writing and more prevalent voice acting and all these things because the budgets are there. Um, but the, at the end of the day, the world was the star. And it, it feels like we've lost that. Um and so what would that look like in World of Warcraft? What would that look like in Final Fantasy? Um, and do these games deserve to live 30 years, 40 years? Do we get to a point where it's 50 years and you've got people, you've got multiple careers that have gone their entire career working on one game that was both around before them and will be around after them? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I think that's going to be something really interesting, especially if they are kind of going in that that route. Because the question is always like, do they go with a WoW 2? Uh, we do know, like, especially when it looks at uh, just that when you look at it, it's not like there's just one player in the space. You have Amazon stepping into it. You've got, you know, uh, with Ashes of Creation, you have, uh, I'm forgetting the name, there's uh, Intrepid. There we go. Uh, and then you also have like, you know, things like that with Blue Protocol. So we're all looking at like built on the latest round of technology, like looking at it. And the things that hold those games back ends up being that it doesn't have 15 and 20 years of content. That's usually the general frustration that players who step into these games say, hey, I beat it. And what do I do now? And it's like, well, now you wait. And it's like, oh, there's not all this legacy content. There's not all this other stuff that I can do. There's not a like a well-formed community that all has a shared love or hatred for this game that we can either say how it's the best game in the world or we can just all like play it and grumble about how it's like, you know, like, oh man, they really like let this thing go and or what have you. Like those shared communal aspects like take time to de develop. But what the new games do have is they do have the, the concept of cloud and distributed technology. You have like engines that like really bring out things that are not being done in these, in these older games, you know, just things like that, that separate. And that's one of the things that people who, who step into these newer games remark and they feel, and that's why you see a lot of pressure, I think being put on ashes of creation. I think before the show, uh, somebody was asking if we've seen the lazy peon video. And it's like, I saw one of his breaking down the systems of ashes and his, and that's where my biggest concern for the future of that game is I keep seeing people saying like, if ashes fails, then I don't, I don't know what it will be for MMOs. And I honestly don't know if those those same people who are saying that are going to stick around with Ashes because they'll, they'll get bored and they'll want to go do something else because they've been trained that it's perfectly fine and you jump from game to game to game um, because that's just the nature of it. They're not going to relive their their teenage years when they had no, no money and nothing but time you know, to experience that. But in the case of WoW, instead of going to 2.0, like what I would like to see is like, he talks a lot about the zone redesign, bringing back the world tree, uh, you know, like all these things. A lot of these things that mean nothing to me as somebody who cannot and has not gotten into the game. But what would be interesting to see is that if, you know, we're talking about in the back end, engine refresh, does it come to console? Does it say, hey, listen, we know we've been here, but now we see, especially on the playing field across the board, like what does a World of Warcraft 11.0 that would come out to console have like controller support, open it up to an even wider range of players who maybe have fallen away and just want to jump in and dip out and in? Like, what do you think, Riz? So you noted a couple things there that you yeah. don't have context on. Um, so in Cataclysm, they did a lot of back-end realignment. And as a result, the kind of front end, what the players are playing, um, didn't feel as polished as wrath of the lich king and so for many people that was the turning point where their relationship with world of warcraft began to to slide mm -hmm. um i think firelands was a great tier i think there i think there was some great stuff in cataclysm but overall like compared to wrath it just felt like there was so much going on off screen uh that on screen i, I don't think it had the same punch as wrath of the lich king which is why that's such an anticipated relaunch in classic september 26th um is is Wrath of the Lich King coming back and Olduar being, I mean, Olduar has been held up as one of the best raid tiers in any MMORPG ever. Um, it's what put, you know, it's what led to a lot of the leadership that is there today is, is yeah. how well that was received. But that's essentially um, kind of one of my so, biggest complaints about MMOs and how they've evolved into this raid culture. Like that is the pinnacle uh, piece of content where, like you said, like bringing back the world, like if they were to balance it in a way that it's like, raids great cool awesome people like it but also within the world like you're out and you know but that's that's just my take but go ahead keep continue so then with future expansions um they did less of that kind of off screen and things got done more on screen mm -hmm. uh, and so we had a chance to there the elves lived in this big giant tree uh, and a character burned that tree down and mm -hmm. players got to go take part in that and alliance players got to rescue refugees um, in this event and horde players got to help basically burn this thing down uh, and then it was gone that was a pre-patch event it was like your 1.0 sending out days and mm -hmm. you were either there or you weren't I yeah. did it as a horde player it was incredible to be a part of as somebody who started the game as a night elf player um, like it and and went to horde and played druid like and being in touch with nature and all this like it felt nuts um it was like what are we doing this is crazy mm -hmm. um and then we the undead city you thought the alliance was going to attack the undead city and then that same character basically 
bomb the undead city. And so like we've lost these cities and there is this concern of, are they just going to try to write it over? Are they just going to try to smooth it out? And with 11.0, they just do a cataclysm and they're like, and things are different now. Yeah. Um, and there's, and so how do we handle things moving forward? And what was interesting narratively and would have to do with world design, um, what kind of events do we do in game is that um, the official statement is no, if the world tree comes back, if Lordaeron comes back, if Gilneas is, is like, if any of these places that have a history um, come back or are destroyed, if anything changes, that is all going to be something that happens in game now. Mm -hmm. We're not doing yeah. any of that off screen stuff anymore, um, which I think is a real departure to say you don't get to just jump to your favorite parts of the timeline. It can't just be about these big cinematic moments and then you just ride over whatever it takes to get there. We're telling a story here. We're living in a world. And so mm -hmm. I, I think that was the right statement that says, like, you know, that's what we're experiencing in Final Fantasy right now. You don't get to just say it ended and now we're in the next thing. Right. We've got a transition. And so these the, the patches point one and point two are slower uh, <laughs> because they're not a finale. Uh, and so we're we're just getting our engine started on this next saga. And it leaves a lot of questions, but not questions that like are burning and keeping you up at night. You're like, yeah, OK. Um, and that's part of it. We're at the beginning of a 10 year journey. And uh, so I think it was exciting to see WoW take that same mentality um and hopefully they can they can make that happen and i think it starts with 10.0 and i think it's something that you don't have to trust them with 10.0 they have to show us with 10.0 and then they have to show mm -hmm. us again with 11.0 yeah but what, yeah. let's assume for a moment we have three years in a row of good development good storytelling good world design good mechanics um good management of their power systems and all of that um it's the sort of thing that says we are ushering in a new chapter for world of warcraft and really i think starts to say okay and we're going to try to keep up with games like final fantasy that are off to their next chapter and whatever guild wars is doing whatever all these new mmos we're talking about is people are excited about riot people are excited mm -hmm. about ashes people are excited about star city you know all these different games um meanwhile like eso's cranking out content you know there there are games that are still just, just doing their thing um I, I think to see wow say yeah i i that's that actually tells me they're listening more than all they're sitting around a round table looking at the camera saying, we're listening, we're, we're listening. listening, we're listening. Like, I don't, I don't care about that. Show me. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's time for action and action is going to speak a lot louder for words. Cause like they've burned a lot of that trust. Like if you ever think of that, uh, as a bank of withdrawing and depositing, I think even back in the day, they were talking about like, we're, you know, like we're, we're deposit, like the players are depositing their trust in here. And then eventually they would end up going on this big spending spree of that. And so what you said is absolutely true. I think if 10.0 comes out and people, it doesn't have to be the be all end all, but if people were like, all right, like it's starting to actually like feel really good. And they follow that up with a strong 11.0. Like that's where all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, wow is gearing up for the next decade uh, with a fight on its hands, you know, like it's, it, you know, you get, people have a lot of nostalgia. We, we kind of talked about it. We don't actually have a topic for this uh, specific show, but about how like there's this mentality in 14 that the, 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 the reason why 14 is having such drama and such struggle right now is because of all these wow players that have come in and ruined the community. And, you know, like we saw like a thread over that and it's like, that is such like such BS, um, you know, overall like it's that's not in that case i would say that anybody also po probably most likely pointing the finger at wow is a vo is a, at one point a wow player like it's just like in that regards because i've we've there's lots of really good experiences with that and it's like, over 120 million people have played wow yeah 14 so, coming up on 40 million right so it's like oh, statistically yeah. within mmorpgs 14 players have played wow yeah statistically some of us have done that which means some of us didn't come over here because we didn't like, like, like still like, wow. Some still play both. Some go back and forth. So I think that like idea of like, this is the time they're all coming over and there's, there's charging the castle. Not to mention you've been telling them for years that your game is better. Now stay out. Yeah. Like, get out. What is your plan? The, uh, what oh. Asmik Gold's going to bring his toxic community. Meanwhile, like, but well, we got to go bully him and get banned from the game. Like, and then now he's not playing. Why isn't he playing? It is poetic, to say the least. 
the um so no i i think essentially like what would be interesting for me as a non-wow guy it's like especially as you look at like a, 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 another decade like lay the foundation really deliver 11.0 and then essentially i think what would be interesting to hear from them as they gear up at, at 20 is like what are, we're going to 30 like yoshi p sat down and said hey we got another 10 year plan we're going to do another 10 years of this game and that's that's kicking off and the 7.0 is going to actually most likely come out and then the game will turn 11 in terms of if we're aging it from arr it's already 13 i think years old from the announcement 12 years old etc blah 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 whatever uh but then all of a sudden you start looking at that like okay great what does 14 look like especially if the 7.0 comes out in 2024 that would also be you know maybe in the beginning of the year wow you know 11.0 at the end of the year november you know maybe um you know for for that aspect and then both of them gearing up for another 10 years and so i'm wondering what we'll see them learn from each other because there's things that i've heard a lot of wow players come in and say oh i really like this system because it doesn't make me do all these needless things where in wow i felt like i had to do all these pointless things just to do this one thing and then in 14 it's like the the concept of like oh if you want to get into the game you know that like if i wanted to get into 11.0 like i kind of can um but one of the things that does concern me and this will be interesting kind of get your thoughts on it because uh the justification of the level squish uh it helped to ease a little bit of a burden of the the anxiety of like stepping in but now didn't they say that it's actually going to 70 and it's not going to do that 50 to 60 so I, my hope is that if that 14 looks at that and says, no, we're not going to do that. You know, like I would feel horrible. And, and honestly, it's like when they said they were going to 70, I was like, oh, so it's not a level switch. It's just them just resetting this to climb back so up again to 120 or 130. What do you think? It was. So here's the journey that went through. Yeah. So Ian came out at BlizzCon and said, levels don't make sense. Because what happens is you have so many levels that you either ask a new player to level through 600 hours of content to join us. And that's insane. And mm -hmm. what Final Fantasy does every day. He didn't say that last part. <laughs> now, or you speed them through it. In which case, it goes, level up. And you go, eh. Eh. Which means it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So why even have levels if they're so worthless? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he wanted to usher back to the true old school RPG game stays like D and D where at the, if at the end of a session you level up, it's a big deal. Oh my God. I got a new spell. I can't wait to use it. It's a right. huge deal. It Feels is a important. Drastic, it's, it, it's wildly important. So he wants every single level to have a reward that is meaningful. Every single level should matter and should feel big. Step one, there can't be 6 billion of them. I can't have six billion rewards or they they or it's it's too much. So let's condense it down to a number. So let's condense it down to, let's say, 50. We think our game takes 50 base levels to get every single reward handed to you. Maybe at this level, you unlock the ability to mount. Maybe at this ability, this you unlock something that really finishes out your rotation. And so let's just kind of build that out over 50. And then we'll have the current expansion bolt 10 levels on. And so then we'll talk about what this means. What do you do for the one to 50? And that turns into all these other systems that they tried, chromie time and all that. And so that's what matters. And in my head, I thought, very cool. And they said, it's an incredibly manual thing, but we're building in systems that make it dynamic. So if we ever have to do stat squishes in the future, all that stuff, they, they've moved to this dynamic stat squish system. So in my mind, what that means is that every expansion, all 60s become 50s, all 50s become 47s or whatever the math works out because they basically take the total amount of experience you have, they adjust the amount of experience it takes to get to 60 to now that's what it takes to get to 50. And then you just end up wherever on the sliding curve you end up. And so you you know, you know log in, you lose a level. But, but you have the same amount of experience. They didn't take any of your experience away. They just increased how much experience it takes to get to each point and you just adjust down. And all 60s drop to 50. And then we go back and we drop our Shadowlands borrowed power system. And I thought it actually kind of solved the borrowed power thing a little bit other than, now, other than the inherent problems it has. And then it says, no, you lost that. You're 50 again. And now we're going to bolt on 10 levels. Now, fast forward two years. Okay, so what are we doing after Shadowlands? We're going to bolt on another 10 levels. But doesn't that go against everything you said before? 
And he goes, well, we just figure that like, yeah, it'll probably be a problem again, but that's probably 10 years from now. So worry about that then. And all that told me is Ian's going to retire sometime in the next 10 years. And he doesn't give a crap who he hands it off to. And I don't know how else to say that. Like, I like a lot of the things that Ian has done for the game. I've, I've disagreed with plenty of things he's done for the game, but ultimately with this, that tells me I, I fixed it for the amount of time that I think it needs to be fixed for. And after that, somebody else can clean up my mess. The, um, I honestly, like one of the things that when I look at my experience, like final fantasy 11 held on to its level 75 for so long, like it never was always increasing that, but people really enjoyed that it you hit this and then there was this other kind of systems that would open up and that's honestly what i wish we would see make a return because there is a value in level 60 as a cap in terms of world of warcraft it makes it less burdensome to step into i wish that they would keep the cap at 60 and then have some kind of post experience system that's what guild wars does right and so the guild wars i think once really nails it right once 80 always 80 and then all that's of a sudden, this was. right. And it, 50 that, is the real cap and right. there's 10 posts. And so like, that's where, when it comes down to it, like to, to bring this into kind of Final Fantasy 14 terms, my hope, my wish, my dream would be like, just keep, cap it at 99, like have the next expansion 7.0, take the level to 99, which is a classic Final Fantasy level. And then have a post experience leveling, whatever. And never again, no, there's 8.0, 9.0, 10.0. The level cap is still 99. And then if you want to have an engage in all of this, in this case, optional leveling, then you can. And there's rewards that are structured to it that are fun, little glamour stuff, et cetera. Like that would be the ideal as opposed to like if 14 ever said like, guys, 120, 130, like this is like not only that is the story itself because like all of a sudden it's like you just have this like okay here's this uh you know like you're gonna spend months and months and months just trying to get live through a thousand years of war a thousand years of war you know um then all of a sudden it's like okay then they ever squish it like they ever do what wow did it's like that will not feel good i i even said i was like as a as a player who's looking at this i honestly hope that new mmos kind of look at this and seeing like hey how, how does this game that's now 20 years old handle it not great <laughs> you know it's like they had to pull back all these levels and and, and in it wasn't also wrong having all this extra stuff like what does that even mean for the player how do we make that feel significant and it's like well i honestly go back to final Fantasy 11 they did they eventually and ultimately raised the level cap to 99 but it's still sad at that so they kind of hit that final fantasy branded level cap that it was in across all of their games and so like i think it's like yeah pick a level cap and then essentially design an xp system that is a post progression stuff so that in you know five years 10 years 20 years it's still like you're not being you're not sitting here and telling somebody they have an insurmountable amount of you know work to do in that regard and if people like leveling and having skills and the devs want that then then do that and have us be oh do you have your your 7.0 plus 10 so you're 99 plus 10 and then it's like just like aether rates right you can fly in some zones and not others so you can still level in each expansion but like because it's but i don't know that that works for 14 because 14 is linear narratively as opposed to something like eso or guild wars where i can do things out of order if i want to um there's a preferred path but i don't have to stick to it uh and so the ability to kind of do expansions out of order you know, WoW's crafting system, I can level up for each individual expansion. So I can go do the Burning Crusade crafting after Shadowlands crafting. Um, and so I think there's there's a real step there for like, what do you do? Now, these problems we're talking about that are in the future of 14 that are, that are hitting WoW now, they are problems that result from the mistake of being successful for too long. Like, that's what they're being penalized for. So before we get like to like, well, they should have seen this coming. Other, you know, New World's handling this better. We don't know that. Like, get New World to 10 years old and see if it's like, yeah, well, exactly. a series of Oops. bad choices. So it's, it's really easy for everything to work great in your game for the first two, three, 10 years. Mm -hmm. It's after that. What do you do when you've accidentally put too much content in your game? So that's, that's really where World of Warcraft is at, is that what do they do with 11.0? And it's a, it's a guideline for what would Final Fantasy either want to do or not to do. Because learning from WoW does not mean copying WoW. Learning from WoW can also be, I watched them do that. We actually thought about doing that. Mm, then, mm. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. so like it, 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 
it does kind of chart a path for what are the options that Final Fantasy could consider because inevitably they will run into the same issue. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Chris says, as kind of my final thought on this topic, um, before we move into kind of your final thought, says, love how discussions on certain game mechanics so often just go to, just do it like Guild Wars 2, because that game really needs more players and more praise. Uh, and I was going to be like, the joke is, is that we are now the Guild Wars 2 marketing team, uh, because Guild Wars 2, I think, its greatest weakness is, is that they don't really market their game. Um, and it usually comes down to like, yeah, Guild Wars 2, like they really nailed that. You're right. They really nailed that level cap. This is what it is. And then here's these other systems that you can engage with post level cap, meaning that horizontal progression um, that really, I think uh, that, that speaks to me as, as a player in and of itself. What are your, what's your final thought, Chris? I mean, Guild Wars has its own flaws, so it's easy to point yeah. to things Guild Wars is doing and doing well and, and say like, wow, unfortunately, need to learn from those, but it has its own flaws. Um, but I do agree it's it's doing a lot well and it's doing a lot that's allowed it to age gracefully. Um, and that's something that like 14 is going to struggle with because they've built a standard of you need to clear all the story from day one to now. Mm -hmm. And like that was fine, except that you've continued stacking more story on top and like if 600 hours is not too much to ask of a new player is a thousand hours. Like what's the number? There's a number. It used to be like, well, maybe 300 is too much. Oh, 300 is not too much. Um, but now it's, it's gotta be 500 hours now, especially because now we're starting to say you have to clear raid series. You have to clear Alliance raid. You have to do Hildebrand. You have to do your class quests and your role quests. And if you hadn't, you don't like this game. And so like, if we're going to continue lording that over people, um, you know, what are, what exactly are you asking? Uh, and, and it's, it's hard. Um, and the game itself encourages a lot of that. So like wow and 14 have both created the problems that they they're, they're heading into or are already in, um, by just setting up something that worked really well when the game was younger than it is now, mm -hmm. uh, which is something I think a lot of us can relate to. We all made choices earlier in life because they thought it would work out fine. And then you get to a different age and you're like, that was dumb. Uh, <laughs> I wish I'd, I wish I'd made some different decisions earlier because things could be better for me now. Uh, so I think it's something we can relate to. And, you know, it's not to go back and throw hate on those younger versions. It's just to say, OK, now that I recognize what that problem is, how do we fix it from here? Mm -hmm. um, and what do we do moving forward? Because the answer can't just be, well, let me just keep ignoring it. <laughs> now that I know it's a problem, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. Anyway, guys, always let us know what you guys are thinking in the comments below. Uh, also, as a part of these live shows as well, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, hit that like button, subscribe, and share for more uh, work to game discussion content, especially around MMOs.